Hello, I'm Dr. Kim Yong Jin. The lower anterior region has very narrow bone width, and the space between teeth is very small. So there's anatomical limitations to use the one guide kit for guided surgery, which was introduced in the previous lecture. So we have a special version from Austin, one MS kit, which is exactly for that purpose. In this lecture, let me talk about how to apply the one MS kit clinically. When we place an implant in the anterior mandible, we need to consider two factors. One is narrow bone width. The root size is small in that area, so buccolingual width is limited, and after extraction, the width would be reduced further. And basal distal distance in the edentulous area is very narrow, so a normal two-piece type implant cannot be easily placed there. Buccolingual and mesial distal width are very limited for placing implants accurately. In terms of drilling and angulation, the anterior mandible is like this. The bone width is very narrow and the mesial distal distance is limited. The primary cause of extraction is periodontal disease, so you will encounter bone defect frequently. So placing a normal two-piece type implant would require block bone or GBR procedures in addition to the placement. One more thing, this can happen. When you place a pre-mounted type implant, the outer diameter of the mounted driver, which is used to hold an implant, is about 4.9 millimeters. If the mesodistal width of the bone is less than 4.9 millimeters, implants cannot be placed in proper positions. Even 3.5 millimeter diameter implant, if it is a two piece type, there are limitations in placing it. But the mandibular anterior region has the benefit of good bone quality. The bone quality is good enough even for immediate loading. Bone quantity is small, but bone quality is very good. So Austin has developed MS implant system, which is widely used for anterior mandible. It looks like this. The apical part is sharp and the body is tapered, so it can be easily placed even in the anterior mandible where bone quality is good. And it adopted SLA surface. So an implant can be placed even mesodistal distance is very limited. In the area where alveolar bone width is very small, buccal lingually, Without additional procedure like GBR or block bone graft, implants can be placed. I also love to place MS implants. Let me show you a clinical case. The patient came due to fracture in the anterior mandible. While eating in the area was endotreated before, so the patient came with only root breast. So the tooth is extracted and implant needs to be placed in this patient. Two piece, 3.5 millimeter diameter implant can be inserted in terms of mesial distal distance, but we chose one body MS implant. If you place a two piece type implant here, the diameter of the abutment on top of the implant would be bigger than the diameter of the cervical part of an adjacent tooth, left and right side symmetry would not be achieved, so it would not be harmonious. But if you use a one-body implant, we can control the cervical diameter, so the prosthesis would be much more in harmony with the adjacent natural tooth. So MS implant is chosen, carefully root rest is removed, and an MS implant is placed. This is a one-body implant, therefore no need to prepare the prosthetic compartment separately.
This is Postal Panorama PA. The root of the adjacent teeth are not damaged. A provisional cap is connected for provisional restoration, and a temporary crown is bonded over it. That means the abutment part of the MS implant is not cemented, but the provisional cap is clicked on. That is a big plus for the prosthesis. If you use the cementation, the excess cement would cause infection or gingival inflammation, so you can do without them. Easily, the temporary prosthesis can be connected like this. After about two months, gingiva is healed like this. It is properly healed, and the cement is not used at all, leading to good gingival response. About two months after the procedure, after about six to eight weeks, the impression can be taken using a specialized impression plastic cap. So impression can be taken using that and clip-on type abutment connection. So the prosthetic procedure becomes very simple. Final prosthesis is fabricated, and this is after the delivery. Long-term follow-up, post-op 24 weeks, the clinical photo, no gingival recession, it is very well maintained. PA, the MS implant is a one-body type, simplifying the prosthetic procedure. It requires very accurate placement. The ideal MS implant position would be a little bit lingual to the virtual line connecting the labial surfaces of natural teeth. It requires accurate drilling and accurate implant angulation and position. It is a one-body implant. It is very hard to bend the abutment part or grind off, hard to modify, so accurate placement is required when mesodistal distance is short and uh, bone width is narrow, it is not easy to place an implant, but you can get the help from the guided surgery. To apply a one-guide system, this has a disadvantage. The one-guide drill in the one-guide kit, the stopper's diameter is about 6 millimeters, so to use the one guide kit, at least the mesodistal diameter should be 6 millimeters, and we need to consider the thickness of the guide hole, so it should be thicker. However, as you can see on the right photos, the mesodistal diameter of mandible incisors is less than 6 millimeters, especially for single implant placement, so the one guide system cannot be used here. So for MS implant or TS3, 3.0 millimeter narrow implants, a special lineup is prepared. One narrow kit, one MS kit has been developed for narrow diameter implant placement. This is the dedicated for such implants. One MS kit is to be introduced. If you want to use the 1MS kit, templates for 1MS implants need to be used. Let me talk about them. Implants like these can be placed with 1MS system. Diameters 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0 MS implants and 3.0 TS3 implant. Diameter 3.0 two-piece type TS3 implant can be placed. The mesodistal distance is very narrow, so existing 5.0 diameter one guide hole cannot be used. So the barrel part of the guide, the diameter is reduced to 3.5. Also, the offset length of one guide system is 10.5 millimeters. The distance from the top of the plant implant and to the top of the guide hole 
However, in this one MS system, in many cases, when you place a one body type implant in the anterior mandible, due to period disease, many adjacent teeth would have long crown. So offset had to be lengthened to avoid the interference from the adjacent teeth due to crowding. So the barrel became longer. In the one guide system, the barrel size was 8.0 millimeter long but in the one ms system the length of the barrel is increased to 11 millimeters so the barrel became thin and long so as i said before the offset length of one ms system is 13.5 millimeters three millimeters increased from the one guide system even though you have crowding in the adjacent teeth and even the crown of adjacent teeth is long due to periodontal disease. Drilling can be done very accurately by avoiding them. In the three-shape implant studio, one MS system library is included. If you click on the one MS system, naturally one MS template is generated. Just like the one guided system, there is the closed type and lateral open type. There are two choices. Through the one MS template, MS implant or TS3 3.0 can be placed using this one MS kit. The layout. First, the tissue punch can be used. However, in the interior mandible, if the gingiva thickness is not big, I don't use this. And we do immediate placement a lot in the interior mandible, then this can be avoided. Next, the flattening drill. I introduced the one guide kit in the previous lecture to remove the cortical bone interference. This is used. Next, one MS drill, just like the one guide drill. This is used as a final drill to place MS implants. The diameters include 1.5, 1.8, 2.3, and 2.7. 2.7 millimeter diameter drill is used to place 3.0 millimeter diameter TS3 implants. The 1MS drill configuration to grind off the top cortical bone in D1 bone. When implant placement torque goes up too much, compression necrosis or thermal damage can occur. This is the cortical drill to expand the cortical bone in D1 bone to control the placement torque. When we place an implant, these drivers are used, fixture driver and no mount drivers. For MS driver placement, you can use the tools on the left hand side and on the right hand side, no mount driver and fixture driver to place TS3 implants. The MS implants are divided into two groups depending on the gingiva height. Gingiva height 2.5 millimeters and 4.0 millimeters. So when we place an MS implants using the fixture driver to control the depth, if the gingiva height is 2.5 millimeters, the reference point is the laser marking, the black one, up to the top of that marking. So the thick black laser mark, the top part of that mark should be the reference in terms of the depth of the placement to control the depth. For gingiva height of 4.0, the MS implant should be placed up to the bottom line of that thick marking. That is how to control the depth of placement. One MS kit drilling sequence is very simple like a one guide system to place 2.5 millimeter diameter MS implant up to 1.8 drill can be used. In most cases, you can use up to the drill 0.7 millimeter minus the diameter of MS implant to be placed. Then you don't need to use many drills. For a guided surgery, you need to adhere to this principle. There's no initial drill. 
in the one guide kit, initial drills are available. Using the initial drill, the first marking on the bone is made to have apical bone contact. When you use 1MS kit, there's no initial drill, so 8.5 length drill should be used the first like an initial drill rather than placing short implants in the anterior mandible 10.0 or 11.5 or 30 millimeter long implants are placed if you use the long drill as an initial drill the guide contact will not be achieved in the previous lecture i talked about the importance of initial drilling with one guide. For initial drilling, the guide barrel of the drill should come in contact with the inside of the guide hole. If you use the long 1ms drill directly, the drilling starts without contact with the guide. That leads to inaccurate drilling. The angulation of the drilling can change or the drill can slip. So even though you place a long implant like 10 millimeters or longer, the initial drilling should be done using 8.5 millimeter long 1ms drill to make the marking first to ensure the double contact concept mentioned before. That means the shortest, the 8.5 millimeter long drill should be used as on initial drill to make sure that the guide barrel comes in contact with the inside of the guide hole. The drilling sequence, as I said before, 0.7 mm minus the MS implant diameter to be placed should be the final drill size. If the bone is hard, tapered cortical drill can be used. Clinically, if I encounter a case like this, we are reluctant to place implants here. Can we place implants in these patients? In the maxilla, the lateral incisor can be congenitally missing. Then, this is the situation. Mesiodistally, it is limited, and the bone width is very narrow, and the direction of the root is unfavorable for implant placement. One MS system is designed to overcome this problem. Let me introduce a case. 21-year-old female. Ortho treatment is completed for her congenitally missing mandibular canine. The ortho treatment was to secure the space and um, space is sufficiently obtained but buccal bone width is very narrow rather than placing an implant by raising a flap guide system one ms system is used to place an implant pre-op photo it is ct scanned in advance and in the digital center the planning is completed a 1ms surgical template is fabricated and sent to the clinic. The template is delivered into the mouth using 1ms kit. As I said before, the drilling is done to place an implant. And the flap is not raised. After the placement, prefabricated PMMA crown is cemented. post panorama NPA, as you can see, on the CT, the buccal lingual width is very limited, but uh, in terms of the positioning and the relation with the opposing teeth, the implant is placed in an ideal position. Post of four week healing and PA, post of 12 week before taking the final impression, and there's no gingival recession or papilla loss at all. Osseo integration of the implant was successful. Post up 12 weeks before the delivery of the fabricated final prosthesis. After the delivery of the final prosthesis, panorama PA. As you can see, buccal lingual mesiodistal bone width was very limited but implant is placed with ideal angulation 
and position without damaging the root of adjacent teeth, which led to the ideal fabrication of the prosthesis. All of us are aware that MS implants are excellent implant system, but we are hesitant in using it clinically for fear of making a mistake during drilling or if the path is modified, the fixation cannot be achieved. So MS implants require you to adjust to the system. At this time, this one MS system can be used to place MS implants without stress in a simple and comfortable way. However, most importantly, when we use one MS kit for the initial drilling, 8.5 millimeter long drill should be used, even though you planned a long implant. That should be remembered. Using digital guide system and place an implant, there are many benefits. However, the standard digital guide system, the one guide cannot resolve the problem in the anterior mandible. In that case, MS implants can be easily placed with this one MS kit. I hope this lecture has been helpful for you to place MS implants. Thank you for your attention.